what I'm going to tie here today is a, it's called a glitter bug, a real common uh, fly here in Newfoundland. A fly that many associate with topwater action, but can also be fished as a wet fly, is the glitter bug, also known as a green ass bug. Four years ago, I caught most of my salmon on the gander on this fly swung beneath the surface like a wet fly. Fairly simple to tie, it's sort of a variation on a bomber. And it starts with a, this, is, I'm just gonna use a size eight salmon hook here. Uh, real important here in Newfoundland, uh, barbless hooks only, so I'm gonna mash the barb. Uh, just get that flattened down real nice. And then get the hook firmly secured in the jaws of my tying vise. Just like that. All right, just for, for tying thread, a uh, little uh, light, light gel spun thread. I, I do like the gel spun for, for tying deer hair. It's nice and, nice and uh, strong, a little slippery. It uh, doesn't cut real well with scissors. That's why I'm using a little razor blade uh, to, to cut it. Just kind of filling in the space behind the, the hook eye return there. Kind of very traditional salmon fly. And so the reason it's called a glitter bug is uh, it's got a, a little bit of a crystal flash in it, pearl crystal flash. But I'm gonna tie that in second, uh, oh, just over top of some, some calf tail. Calf tail or kip tail. I'm gonna keep this tail fairly short. Just strip out the lower fuzzy stuff. Make a big old mess of tying table. And I, I am gonna stack this just to get the tips aligned. The, the, the tail again is fairly short and I want it to look somewhat even. I usually don't stack uh, for flies like this. What we're going to here so what I'm going to do is get that. I only want it to be about a hook gap in length for that for that little tail, and I, I greatly prefer to to trim to length before I tie in rather than after the fact. Give my little my bobbin a little counterclockwise spin. It's going to make that thread jump rearward and catch that calf calf tail, and then just wind all the way back right to the start of the bend, which is about halfway between the hook point and, and what was the barb. Then I'm gonna go back up, and I can do this because of that, that hook return. I'm just trying to fill in the space along the, the shank of the hook. Not much flash. You don't, you don't really wanna overdo it with the flash here. Crystal flash shows up really, really well on the water, in the water, and, and uh, too much is just too much. So I got four strands there. So kind of the same thing. Set it there right at the return. What I'm gonna do is I, I pull the crystal flash up and toward me. And what that does is, is it allows the crystal flash to land right on top of the shank as opposed to being pushed by the tying thread to the far side of the hook. And it really helps out. The other things, just to kind of save on crystal flash, I don't like wasting materials. One of the things I do is I'll use plunger style hackle pliers, get hold of the material right there, and then snip the crystal flash off to length. And that way I keep keep those strands all together and I can easily find them on my tying bench um, and use them for the next glitter bun. Okay, the butt of this fly, uh, you, you can use um, chartreuse or light green deer hair if you like. A um, lot, lot of people um, use very fine uh, micro chenille, that's what I'm going to use here. I'm just going to get that Secured. I'm going to put this right on top of the shank. You don't want it all that long. And I'm going to try to just keep the chenille together in a bunch. 
again just so I'm not wasting materials this way I can just snip it off and have the rest ready to go just about like that Okay, there are so many different ways to tie bombers. My, my method is, is a little different than most people, but, but bear with me, um, and I'll, I'll kind of try to explain why I do what I do. Uh, I am going to start at the rear of the fly uh, with, with, de with the deer hair. This is deer belly hair. It's very hollow, so it flares, makes a nice kind of floaty body on the fly. And this is a, a nice clump of deer hair, very traditional deer belly hair, traditional color green. Um, Anyway, I'm going to take a fairly ample clump of it. Really hard to tell you exactly how much I'm snipping off here. Anyway, some deer hair has a lot of uh, wispy stuff in it. This is, this is pretty good. I, I'm not even going to clean it, believe it or not. I'm just going to start to um, spin it on hook shanks. So I'm going to take a nice little wrap, little tension on it, take my second wrap, same spot, and then just let that deer hair spin around the hook shank like that. Now the next part, you, you can use all sorts of different things. You can use a, a, a whip finish, um, a, a little half hitch tool if you will. Um, sometimes you can use the end of a bodkin to, uh, to fit over the hook. I don't think that one will. But I just have these little tools that I've made. They're just, just hollow tubes. And it, it just helps me to pack that, pack that hair on there, get it swept back, and then bring my thread up in front. So I, I'm ready to tie in the next clump, basically. It's all nice and packed together, too. Let's see if I can do this with just two clumps. You guys may notice I'm using larger tying scissors here. When, when you're cutting a lot of material like this, you don't want to use your, your really fine, fine point scissors like that. It just dulls them very, very quickly. So I'm going to pull some of that fluff out of there. And again, same, same procedure, lay the bundle on the near side of the hook, kind of a loose collecting wrap, and then another one which flares and spins the hair all the way around the I'm just going to kind of see where I am at this point, whether I may need another smaller clump. That one really compressed on there, so I'm, I'm going to, I am going to put another little clump on there. Don't want to crowd the hook eye. That's kind of a big deal here. Leave some room. So third, third clump, but a little smaller. You know, spinning deer hair like this, it, it, it seems like a kind of a hassle. It's, it's a lot of, you know, time consuming and, and things like that as compared to say other flies. But in the end, it, it really is kind of, kind of fun. And uh, the end result is always, always pretty neat. So we're looking pretty good here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use that same little tube tool and I'm just going to run some half hitches into here and because I, I do like taking the fly out of my tying vise in order to trim it so I'm gonna pull this out and this is where you start to make just a really big mess of your tying table so I, I don't definitely don't want to snip that that beautiful little calf tail off. Some people put tape over it, which works really well. If you want, I'm just going to try to be careful here. And generally I just cut kind of a square or rectangular shape. I do want to go along the very bottom of the shank because you don't want to block the, the hook gap here too badly.
You can also use a, 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 a razor blade to do this, a double-edged razor blade. They're very, very sharp uh, and work well. But, but again, it's so with that that it's so easy to uh, trim too much, and we definitely don't want to do that. So I'm just going to get that clip to shape. Sometimes it's easier to go back to your vise for the fine work, just to get it held steady. I'm going to use a, a pair of uh, curved blade scissors here. Just sneak in there, trim that stuff off to make that bright chartreuse chenille butt more visible on the fly. It's surprising how, how much deer hair you actually have to cut off to get them down to about the right shape. They, they do not have to be real real big and in bulky you don't want to cut too far down or you're going to end up cutting into your tying thread or having that tie worse yet almost having that tying thread be visible through the deer hair it's kind of a big no-no with these things okay we're ready to go next step i'm going to change the color of my tying thread i'm going to go with black just to to finish the head of the fly off I had been using that white gel spun. This is just a regular um, black thread. Think of Vivas 10 aught maybe. Get that started behind the hook eye. This is where, um, you know, tying in the hackle, a lot of people do it differently than I do, but, but this is just the, the way I'm used to doing it. Anyway, I have a nice, nice short brown hackle from a beautiful hackle cape right there Let me measure this for you so this is a size 8 hook and we want the hackle to be fairly short this is the the hackle feather measures out to about a size 12 and e even though it, it's that small it's also going to burrow down into this deer hair quite a bit so it will appear even smaller uh, this fly does not need a uh, huge hackle on it in fact, it's more desirable to be small. And a little tricky to get this tied in. And just make sure that that's lashed down really, really well. Don't want that pulling out. And I'm gonna reach in with, with my fine scissors and snip that off as close as possible. Hopefully not snipping my tying thread in the process. Now, what I like to do here is I'm gonna take my bobbin and I'm gonna spin it clockwise as if you're looking down on it. And this, this cords up the thread, makes it nice and small and strong. And I'm just gonna take the thread and wind it, kind of wiggle it through that deer hair, just a little spiral wrap. And hopefully you won't see any of the thread going through there because it's just burrowed down in or not that much anyway. And then I can take my hackle and kind of do the same thing. I am going to take one full wrap in front, just a flat wrap in front, and then start, I'm using uh, quite a bit of tension to pull that hackle stem down into the deer hair, get that hackle stem nice and protected, come up and around right right before we get to the chenille. Take three wraps and get that secured back there like that. And then most of the time you say a little prayer, hope for the best and, and just hopefully don't do that. Break that hackle point off a little easier than going in and snipping it. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wind back through the deer hair, pulling nice and snugly down getting the thread to burrow into the hair. And what we're also doing here, real importantly, is cross wrapping that hackle stem. And you know, if a trout or a salmon got a tooth in there, they could break that delicate stem. So when you cross wrap it, you really strengthen it. Alrighty, almost there guys. Just a little, little whip finish.
three or four turn back to front whip finish. Just snip or cut that tying thread free. Take a look at the other side, looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna add a little head cement right to those thread wraps, keep them sealed up and ensure they don't come unraveled. I'm gonna go all the way around. There we go. Um, and that's the, uh, that's the, the glitter bug, uh, ready to fish here at, uh, on the Gander River. And uh, hopefully we get some water coming in next couple of days and a little cooler temperatures and get the fish activated. And uh, we'll, be, we'll certainly be throwing this fly.